The United States government presents... This is our enemy. Tonight, a United Nation goes forward with a determination to win this war and bring about a just and enduring peace. But we cannot win our war or make our peace unless we understand the character of the enemy we're fighting. That's why your government is bringing these programs to you. With us tonight is Francis Perrin, French patriot, who will speak to you later. This is a program of truth. This is the truth about our enemy. France under Hitler. On June 22, 1940, by terms of an armistice signed between Germany and France in the forest of Compiègne, the Third French Republic came to an end in the way it had begun through the defeat of France by Germany. Eight days earlier, the occupation had begun when German troops marched through the streets of Paris. There were no throngs to greet the invaders. Most of the French had left Paris, and the few people that had come to watch the goose-stepping Nazis stood in clusters of three and four, hostile, and for the most part silent. Not far from the Arc de Triomphe stood a small, middle-aged haberdasher, Jacques Talbot and his wife, Bert, proprietors of a small store on the Boulevard de Courcelles. With them was an old friend, David Mathieu, gray-haired and erect. Talbot spoke. The Bosch again. Yes, the Bosch again. But how? Where did they come from? How did they get through? Down in Brittany, you remember, Toth Collier, my farm? Well, I had pigs. They would never keep in their sty. You close all the doors in the house, they would find a way to get in. You would find them rooting around in the parlor. These are not so much pigs, Mathieu. They're wild boars. Mathieu, you have lived longer than us. Explain what went wrong. Our army was the strongest in Europe, no? Six million men. And the Maginot, it was impregnable. Impregnable, Talbot, to all but the corruptible inside. Not all Frenchmen believed in France. I should like to go home and get my gun. Jacques, you and Bert. You should leave Paris. There are going to be terrible times ahead. What, leave the shop, Monsieur Mathieu? We've worked so hard to make it pay. All our lives, practically. Louis and Pierre, our children, we all lived so happily. Leave our home, Monsieur Mathieu. If it is only your home, Bert. If it is only your home, you will have to sacrifice. Things are not as bad as that, eh, Mathieu? The Nazis have been given instructions to behave. I heard it on the Radio Paris this morning. Yes, they will behave. You will see how they will behave. Come, we'll go home. Monsieur Mathieu, you will have tea with us? No, thank you, Bert. My stomach... This... this business has upset it. I think I'll go to my cafe and get a little cognac. That is, if those swine haven't gotten to it before me. Mon Dieu, that is Madame Levy's grocery. They're smashing her shop. Quick, Bert, give me a hand with these shutters out here. We are not doomed, but that won't make any difference. Oh, Jacques, I should go to Madame Levy. She will need help. But she's not there. Her son came by this morning. He's drunk and swine and probably hit you. <laughs> oh, Monsieur Abadasha. Closing early, eh? How about accommodating some last-minute customers? Please, we've had a long day. We, we must have our supper. Perhaps tomorrow morning. Oh, oh, shirts! Oh. Look at those wonderful French shirts Please, in there. Please, gentlemen, they've been made up for a special customer. A special customer? Herr Hitler, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Stay on the other side of the counter. I, I'll report you. You're not supposed to molest citizens. <laughs> oh, she's right. Quiet, you dumbhead. Let me explain to Madame and Monsieur Haberdasher. Look, 
Money? Yes, I have money, too. Nothing but money. Pretty, eh? How many shirts for 200 francs? This money, these bills, they look different from our French bills. Are they good, monsieur? Oh, good, madame. There are none better. They were especially printed for us by Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> then they are counterfeit. <laughs> no, no, they are the new currency. They're worth as much as the old. Soon, in fact, your old bills will be useless. <laughs> oh, is this not like a dream? Look at the label. Boulevard de Courcelles, the blue stripe is fine. Very smart. Made in Paris. How much? 125 francs, monsieur. Jacques, so much they'll cost trouble. It is usually 150, but for our guest. Our guest? <laughs> Did you hear that, Carl? <laughs> I'll take all you have. Oh, wait, Carl. Maybe I want some of those. I like the color. I saw them first. I'm going to have them. There are plenty of others for you. Are you selfish beast? Give me some of those. Take your <laughs> hands. I'll well, take some myself. Yeah, Let go, you oh, lice. Oh, oh, get you for that, Carl. Here. Come on, let go on. Fight to get him. Attention! So you're out to impress the French with German discipline, huh? What are you fighting about? Uh, nothing, sir. We we were just buying some shirts. Well, take your shirts and get out. Yes, sir. We we were just going, sir. Those blue ones are mine. Leave the money. Uh, yes, sir. No more brawling, you understand? Not in my district, anyhow. Yes, sir. Lucky he came in. Who's the proprietor? I am, monsieur officer. How much are these shirts? One hundred and twenty... One hundred francs, monsieur. You know that all prices have been frozen? We have been getting more, monsieur. Well, what my wife says is true. How many of these do you have? Of that quality, monsieur. Seven dozen. But in monsieur's size... Never mind about my size. I'll take the lot. How much? Eighty-four hundred francs, monsieur. Very well. I want you to make a list of everything you have here. Everything? Shirts, socks, ties, handkerchiefs, cotton, everything, you understand? We leave the prices to you. But is monsieur setting up a store somewhere? Yes, in the supply division of the German army. The German army is buying our stock. Well, does monsieur carry so much money around with him? It will not be necessary to pay for them immediately. Careful record of your account where the army is kept. The present, your stock is requisitioned. Here are my orders. But the, the money, monsieur, your soldiers have money, all, all that money you're printing. I'm afraid that won't be much use to you. It has no value yet. No value? When we've stabilized our currency in France, you will get every centime. But, monsieur, when will that be? I don't know. I'm not a financier. But rest assured, you shall be paid in full. But you've taken everything we have. How shall we make a living? We didn't invade France to teach our citizens how to make a living. The truck will be around the morning. Make sure you leave nothing out. Remember, if I catch you hiding anything, I'll have you shot. Heil Hitler. As old Mathieu had predicted, the Nazis went wild in an orgy of drinking and brutality. They bought up everything in sight with their devaluated currency. For a while, Parisians were caught up in a business boom. But as things quieted... The true nature of the occupation became evident. Luxuries vanished. Businesses were requisitioned by the Nazis. Millions were deprived of the means of livelihood, and food became scarcer every day. As their savings vanished, and with nothing to buy or to sell in their shop, the Talbot, with their 19-year-old son Louis, left Paris for Cormier on the Channel Coast. There they shared a house with Alphonse Renache, mayor of Cormier, his daughter, Jeanette. Old Mathieu lived in those parts. Ah, your cuisine, Monsieur Le Maire, is always the best obtainable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the soup is mostly water. But the ham, it is tasty, eh? I have been keeping it under guard for a long time. Uh, perhaps it is a little, uh, ripe. Uh, no, 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 Ah, the ham, Monsieur Le Maire, is best described by the phrase that... Ah, nicely aged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm delighted to have you all share it with me. Mathieu, Bert, Jacques, Louis. Ah, I can't tell you how much happiness it gives me to have you all at my table, meager though it is these days. However, we make a brave clattering with our knives and forks. The Germans looking through the window might think we were having a banquet... <laughs> They will not humiliate us with the crumbs of charity, huh? Yet many Frenchmen are leaving, Papa, going to Germany and Poland to work for these Nazi beasts. I saw them signing up at the town hall. Oh, we cannot judge them, child. 
They have wives and children. Many are starving. They are taken in by the Nazi promises to release our soldiers in German prison camps. Well, I'd sooner starve than work for those brutes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going with the Gaul. I'm going to join the Free French. Louis, you mustn't say things like that. Well, I met a man in the village who's going to get me out of the country. You'll be killed, Louis. If the Nazis don't get you, the government can have you executed for trying to join a foreign army. Foreign? Why, it's the only France I know, Father. I'm going the day after tomorrow. It's all arranged. It is a bad night to be out. Yeah, I shouldn't be surprised if the Nazi patrols lose their way on the cliffs, huh? Papa, the Nazis are getting suspicious. Ah, you're a brave man, Monsieur Le Maire. Nonsense, nonsense, I am. On the cliffs only one night in a week. <laughs> no one would suspect the mayor. Ah, but it is you, Mathieu, and Jeanette, and our new helpers, Jacques and Dirk and Louis. You of the underground, getting out the newspaper, listening to the shortwaves, keeping up hope in our people, giving them the truth about our allies. That is only our duty. The things that worry me are different. I'd give my soul for a spool of cotton, any color. I have needles, seven beautiful needles. And everything needs sewing. But there doesn't seem to be a spool of thread left in France. There is a man I know in the town. I could give him the blue gloves, but... Jacques, the blue gloves, why, they're worth a fortune. Oh, why didn't we keep more of our stock out of the clutches of those dogs? I was thinking, Louis will need some dollars, American dollars. Oh, Monsieur Talbot, you're not going to let him leave. Now, calm yourself, child. My husband likes to be prepared, Janet. With Louis, you can never tell. I can get you dollars, Jacques, but they will cost you 200 francs each. Oh, these prices break my heart. For what we are doing, the whole pack of us could be put before a firing squad. Wait. Who's that? I'll go, Papa. Mm. Some neighbors to come to ask advice, no doubt, huh? The Gestapo. Do not be alarmed. Shut the door, child. Ask the gentleman in. Come in. Well, Ranash? Mm. I am Ranash. Gentleman Franning wishes to see you. I have a car outside. Papa, what is it? Oh, some official business, probably. Finish your supper, child. Now, please, everybody go on. Don't worry. I'll be back in a little while. Mayor Alphonse Ronard. Ah, Monsieur Le Maire. Come in, come in. Ah. Ah, it is a bad night to be out. But it must be something important, Colonel Filing, huh? Trivial to you, perhaps, but fairly important to me. In brief, Monsieur Le Maire, I would like to know who is pushing my soldiers off the cliffs. Pushing, Monsieur Le Colonel? Five German bodies have been found at the base of the cliffs in the past two weeks. There are probably many more drifting in the channel toward England. Oh, the currents do not run that way, Monsieur Le Colonel. If there are Germans in the channel, it is impossible for them to drift in that direction. I didn't bring you here to discuss oceanography. You will find me the murderers of my soldiers, or I shall hold you personally responsible. We are doing everything to make things easy for your simple-minded people, but you are not very cooperative. Oh, you misunderstand our attitude, Monsieur Le Colonel. It is not that we do not appreciate what you are doing for us, but as you say, we are a, a simple people, and perhaps we are too anxious to comply with your new laws. Too anxious? What the devil are you talking about? No, the curfew, for instance. We must hurry home early every evening. Well, what about it? This is a country of rain and mist. At night, the paths along the cliffs are dangerous, even for those who have lived in these parts for years. We slip, we slide. Mm, sometimes in our haste, we, we bump into each other. Yeah, there are accidents. Confound you, sir. I don't care if your whole miserable race bumps out of existence. But why are the bodies that have been bumped, as you call it, over the cliffs, always my soldiers? Well, that I cannot say, Monsieur le Colonel. You are sure-footed enough for the most part. Yeah, we have seen pictures of your inspiring goose step down the Champs Elysees. But keeping your footing in high places, with storms coming up, you do not understand. Monsieur Mayor, you French are a witty race, so we have been told. Our wit is not so subtle. But it is more effective. It might be called the wit of action. 
We did not break the Maginot line to lose our footing on a slippery road. If there is to be slipping, Monsieur Mayer, you will have to be the ones to do it. <laughs> 